For my first job, I was technically hired as a front-end developer. But things weren't that clear-cut on my team, and for my first task, I found myself having to dive into Python code. The problem was I had never formally learned Python, and I found myself having to use it a lot to do my job. No problem. I thought learning on the job is the best way to learn, and I do firmly believe that. That being said, I had to struggle to figure out basic things, a few of which would have made my life so much easier in those early days of using Python. So here's five tips and tricks you can start using right away to improve your Python experience. The first trick is the interactive shell. Let's say I have a Python file with a function that adds two numbers. Now, conventionally, I might call this function at the bottom of my file and then run the file with the Python keyword. But there's another way I could run this function and that is with the interactive shell. So instead of python main.py, I add the dash i flag for interactive. Now I can call this function in a shell like this. This can be really useful for developing things like bots. If you've seen my Tinder bot video, we control our web scraper through this interface. So this will load your Python file, but then instead of closing after running the code, it will give you access to all the functions and variables inside. So again, this is a great way to do development, testing, and it can make you feel like a god when you have the interactive shell at your disposal, issuing commands at will. Tip number two is PDB, the Python debugger. While Python-I will run your entire file, then give you an interface into that environment, PDB can stop your file before it's finished executing so you can debug. I'll give you an example. If I'm adding one and two, and then I'm adding one and some character that shouldn't be there, I will get an error when I try to run this file. But let's say this file is huge and I don't know where the error is occurring. In that case, I can import PDB, the Python debugger that's built into Python, and then call the setTrace method to pause the execution of my code. Now I'll get this weird kind of interface that says PDB, where I can do different things like print the current values of variables and functions, or I can go to the next line with N for next. So again, this can help me identify where my code is breaking, and I can even follow the debugger through complex multiple levels of function calls. The great part is you can import PDB in line, so you don't even have to do it at the top of the file, and then you can just delete this when you're done. Number three, the virtual environment. A big part of the reason Python is so dominant is because of how many good libraries it has. In fact, Python has so many good math, statistics, data analysis, libraries that it will probably be around for quite a long time. That being said, dependency management can be a bit annoying. In other words, how do you confine the libraries you need to a specific project, making it shareable and portable? One of the ways we accomplish this is through virtual environments. The most used one is called virtual env, and you can install it with pip install virtual env. Once you do that, you can create a new environment with virtual env followed by the name of the folder your environment's in. And then you can install the dependencies you need for the project. So you do this by activating the virtual environment by sourcing vnv bin activate. Now you'll see this little prefix in my terminal prompt, meaning it is active. Now I can install any dependencies in isolation. So let's say I wanted to develop uh, a bot. I can pip install selenium, a dependency that I might need and it will just be in this VN folder. Anyway, don't wanna to get too deep into dependencies, but just know that generally working in a virtual environment is the best practice when you're using Python. Number four, list and dict comprehension. Let's say I have some data, a list of fruits with prices and names represented as a dict. It's a pretty common use case to wanna to pull out a single property from an object. But to do that in conventional syntax, we have to do something like this. So it does work, but it also takes four lines and a lot of typing just to get this done. So there is actually a way to do this with one line and that's with list comprehension. 
This has kind of weird syntax that only occurs in Python, but when you get used to it, and if you're not scared of it, kind of like I was, then it can really come in handy. So within these brackets, I'll type a loop like syntax. Essentially, it's giving me each item in the list in a second variable over here. And with this variable, I can modify the output. So this is what will go into our new list. If I print this out, we'll get the same result as before. Now that's not all we can do with list comprehension. We can also append things like conditional statements to the end. For example, if our fruit starts with an A, then it will filter that list down as well. Okay, let's talk about dict comprehension, which is kind of similar to this. This time let's create a dict that has the fruit name as the key and the price as the value. So again, normally we would have to loop through each one of these, manually add them to a dict, but in this case, we can just do that in one line. So I would do this with this syntax. And printing that out, I can see it worked. So again, this part looks the same. It's just a normal loop. But then we set our key and our value over here with that second variable that's created from looking at each item. Tip number five is to use the lambda. I think the name sounded mathy, but a lambda is just exactly the same thing as a function with a different syntax. Let me show you what I mean. So we have a function for add, and I'm gonna make another function add to that has a lambda. So it turns out, and if I open this with a interactive shell, these two are exactly the same. So what it is, is just a different syntax. Now, where does this come in handy? And why would you not always use Lambda? Well, this one is quite a bit easier to read and reason about what you're doing. Also, if you have multi-line complex functions, you definitely want to put them in a def. Now, Lambda is very good. For example, if you wanted to define a function uh, in your interactive shell. That's one case that I often use them. And another probably more common example is in list methods that need a callback function. For example, sorting, mapping, and filtering. So let's just use the filter function as an example, which takes as an argument a function that will be applied to all the items, as well as a list. So if I print that out in list format, I'm going to have a list of all the numbers greater than one. Now, this is kind of a lot of code again for what we're trying to do. So one way to do this would be to use list comprehension. In fact, for this example, that would probably be a better way. Or we could again move this to one line using a lambda. So I'm going to delete that function, write a lambda directly in here as an argument and then use a pretty clean syntax just like that. Now, just to make it one line, I'm going to move it uh, directly in here as well, and we'll get the same result. So again, there are a lot of cases where you'll want to use a function as an argument, and lambdas are great in that case too. Hope you guys found that useful. Like the video if you learned something new. Subscribe for more quick tips and tricks and tutorials. And this is Codrip. I will catch you guys soon.